tables. Let's start by understanding what VE tables are and why managing VE clipping is crucial. VE, or volumetric efficiency, measures how effectively your engine is filling its cylinders with the air-fuel mixture. It's critical in determining engine performance. However, when VE tables exceed the table's maximum limits, known as VE clipping, 127.5 on your table, it can lead to significant tuning issues. Today, we'll explore why accurate methodologies are essential to prevent these issues from occurring and protect the integrity of your tune. Here is an example of a VE table. The motorcycles had many changes, exhaust, cam, air cleaner, probably displacement, and now the CDE tables in the base map are no longer pertinent to the new map, to the new configuration of the motorcycle. So you can see we have 127.5s in there, so rather than fudging on engine displacement size or injector size, we're going to take a different approach, a more targeted approach. This is a representation of what a CDE table looks like. This one is for the other build, for example, not for the particular build you might have in this bike. So we're going to look at that. We just saw the VE table and we're going to make adjustments to it. Here's an, an adjusted CDE table. Now this is just an example. These are not the right numbers, but what you're going for is a map that looks like this. This is a realistic expectation. Traditionally, tuners have dealt with VE clipping by either increasing the engine's CID or adjusting the injector size. While these methods might seem effective initially, they're not precise. Increasing CID artificially lowers VE values by making the engine think it has more air flowing through it than it does. It increases the calculated airflow. But because this is a global adjustment, it impacts every other part of your calibration. Similarly, adjusting the injector size can lead to incorrect base pulse width calculations, which throw off your entire fuel delivery. The key issue here is that these are broad changes, global changes, for a problem that needs a targeted solution. CDE tables provide just that. Let's dive deeper into why increasing CID is not the ideal solution. Adjusting the CID affects not just the VE table, but also numerous supporting tables. Examples would be acceleration enrichment, or AE, decel enlement or DE. These tables are critical for the engine's response to throttle inputs. And any misalignment here can cause erratic engine behavior. Moreover, altering CID distorts airflow calculations, which can lead to inaccurate fuel delivery. If you absolutely must increase CID, if it cannot be handled with the CID tables, and there are cases for that, it's crucial that you use those first and make the smallest adjustments possible to the CID. This will give you a much better running motorcycle. Another common mistake is adjusting the injector size to manage VE clipping. The size of the injector directly influences the base pulse width, which is how long the injector stays open during each cycle. If you fudge this number, you're skewing the BPW calculations, and this can lead to very inaccurate fuel delivery. Too much, too little. How does it work at this altitude, that altitude? It compromises the entire fuel map. It can cause serious issues like lean or rich conditions. The best practice is to always use the correct injector size. I know many of you have been fudging this for years. There's a better way to do it now. I don't want a doctor from 1960 operating on me. Charge dilution effect, or CDE tables, are your go-to tool for managing high VE values without resorting to global adjustments, such as changing CID or injector size. These tables specifically target areas with abnormally high VE values, particularly in regions at 60 kPa or below, where clipping is most common. By using CDE tables, you can rescale this area of the calibration of the tune without altering the entire map, maintaining accuracy where it's most needed. Important to note that CDE tables do not affect VE at all above 70 kPa. They affect it some at 60, more at 50, 40, 30. In the example that we showed earlier, most of that, all of that would have been below 60 kPa. So totally adjustable 
with the CDE tables. Before making any adjustments to the CDE tables, it's essential to ensure that your upper regions, 70 kPa and above, are already accurately dialed in. The VEs are already sorted. This is where your engine is under more load. An accurate calibration here sets the foundation for adjustments in the lower regions. They may be a little higher, but in general, they should be a fairly smooth slope. If there's a little hump in there, that's okay. Additionally, keep an eye on the injector duty cycle. If you're running uh, above 80% duty cycle, you may want to look at using a larger injector. 80% is kind of the gold standard. In these bikes, if you go up to about 85%, I'm okay with that. When you start getting past that, there's another little item in there called end of injector timing. And when it's done, it's done. So even if you think you're running it at 99%, you're not. Lastly, make sure your map normalization process has been completed. That way you know that the cells you're drawing from for your AFR, for your timing, are accurate. When you start adjusting the CDE tables, remember that these are multiplier tables that impact VE values more as map pressure decreases. For example, they have a small effect at 60, but become more and more significant as you go lower at 50, 40, 30, and so on. A good practice is to use your, your upper regions of the VE tables you know, as a guide. 70 to 100 kPa range. The goal is to avoid large disparities in the VE values. You don't want to see a table that has a 115 sitting beside of a 70. That's an example of a terrible VE table. It just nothing runs that way, guys. Finally, it's important to recognize when your VE tables are improperly scaled. For instance, if you see 120 at a low RPM and low throttle position, let's say 15% throttle at 1750. It's physically impossible to fill a cylinder at 120% capacity with the throttle blade 85% closed. So this indicates that your VE table in this area is improperly scaled for the parts combination on your bike. Instead of scaling the entire calibration by increasing CID or moving the injector size around, use the CDE tables to adjust the regions below 60 kPa, which are normally gonna be the anomaly areas. And this targeted approach corrects the scaling issue without impacting the rest of the supporting areas. Learning and applying more advanced tuning techniques will help you deliver better tunes to your customers. Change is sometimes difficult, but it is necessary to advance in the complicated world of EFI tuning. Here at Dynajet, we are all working hard to provide you with the best tool set in the industry to deliver world-class calibrations to your customers. From industry-leading dynamometers to the most up-to-date and advanced tuning products available anywhere, Dynajet has you covered. We do offer advanced training here at Dynajet. You can message your sales rep or message us on social media to find out when we have classes available. And as always, stay tuned.